proper handling of uh, shape at the uh, meat processing plant is absolutely essential. Some of the most progressive plants use trained leader animals to quietly move the animals through the facility. There is the Humane Slaughter Act, which is enforced by the U.S. Department of Agriculture to ensure that animals are treated humanely. The Meat Institute, Association of the Different Processing Plants, Animal Care and Handling Guidelines that are used to monitor animal handling. Audits were established and put in place to identify and address any problems in good management practices and sustain continuous improvements. It's important for processing facilities to have and adhere to written welfare policy. This policy should start with truck unloading and continue through harvest. Processing facilities must also follow the regulations of the Humane Slaughter Act. The National Institute for Animal Agriculture has established guidelines for temperature and humidity management. The Livestock Weather Safety Index can be found at www.animalagriculture.org. Plants are audited on 13 core criteria for plant transportation and on preparedness for receiving animals. These can be viewed at www.animalhandling.org. Plants must have a written animal welfare policy for transporters that describes what to do in case of a traffic accident or breakdown how to address comfort of animals in extreme weather, such as addition of bedding or closing of air vents, and provide guidance on stocking densities. The receiving and holding areas at the plants must provide extreme temperature management tools as well, such as water and fans to combat heat. To minimize time spent waiting to unload animals, plants must have an arrival management plan. Proper handling of immobile or fatigued animals at unloading and in the pens must also be addressed in the plant's animal welfare policy and the necessary tools provided. In situations when euthanasia is necessary, plants must have properly maintained tools and people trained in how to use them available. Pens, gates, and latches must be maintained in good repair. Non-slip flooring must be in place in the unloading area and ramps as well as the pens. There should be adequate lighting and staff available for receiving animals. A well-trained handler will use their knowledge about how sheep naturally behave to help ease the process of relocating sheep from one facility to another. The loading and unloading of sheep will go much smoother for both the animals and handlers when handlers use natural behavior traits of the animals and follow some simple guidelines. Many managers have discovered the advantage of utilizing lead animals to more easily move the animals from place to place. Because sheep naturally want to follow other sheep, a well-trained lead sheep, or in some cases even a goat, can be used to show sheep where they need to go with little or no help. A trained lead animal can simply walk into the area containing the sheep to be moved and turn around and lead them to their destination. In most cases, the lead animals are provided with escape gates which allow them to return to their pen without taking the rest of the sheep with them. On occasion, a lead sheep or goat is not enough to keep the sheep moving. This is where other persuaders can be useful. Some of the common persuaders recommended for use include the rattle paddle, a feed sack, or flag that can be waved gently, or if no other tool is available, a low stress method for encouraging sheep to continue moving can be as simple as making big sweeping motions with or waving your hands and arms slowly in big circles from top to bottom around your body. Appropriate use of the rattle paddle 
begins with never using it to hit or swat at the animals. In fact, it's even recommended that you not touch the animals with the paddle at all. Instead, the paddle can be used to shake and the rattling noise will encourage them to move away from it. It's important to provide sheep a surface that prevents slipping. There are a number of ramp designs that provide firmer footing on a slope. Notice the small raised ribs systematically placed along the entire length of the ramp where sheep descend from this truck into a holding area. Also, when constructing handling facilities, remember that steps designed for the animals to climb or step down should not exceed three and a half inches. Animals tend to go from a darker place into a brighter place, but they won't go into blinding light like heading right straight into the sun. Sometimes they'll have difficulty getting them into a dark building. If they can see through the building, they will go better. And we've got a beautiful example here of seeing through a building. Like, okay, let's say I'm the sheep, I'm just getting off the truck here. That helps, that helps to get them in there. Remember, sheep will move toward an escape route and they will move towards a more brightly illuminated area provided it is not blinding light such as looking into the sun. Block distractions outside the facility with solid fences. Some of the most common distractions are vehicles or extra people. It is essential that semi-trailers have sufficient height between decks to prevent back injuries. Furthermore, adhering to proper density requirements for loading trucks is essential. It is recommended that a minimum of 3.2 square feet be allowed for shorn lambs weighing over 120 pounds and 3.4 square feet for unshorn lambs at the same weight. Studies have confirmed that overloading of trucks is a major cause of bruises when transporting sheep. Downed animals are also more likely to occur on overloaded trucks. Research has shown that the NIAA space guidelines are the optimal loading density. The NIAA has provided tables defining the number of sheep which can be loaded per running foot of truck floor in a truck with a standard 92 inch width. When transporting sheep from different farms or from different social groups or pens, use partitions to separate them to reduce fighting. It's very important that the plant have the scheduling right so as the trucks come in they can back right up to the ramp and unload without having to wait more than 15 minutes or so. It's recommended that the arrival of trucks transporting sheep to processing facilities be scheduled in such a way as to reduce or eliminate waiting in the truck for chutes to be available to unload the animals. Having a written and monitored arrival management process can provide a system to ensure the least stress on animals through the entire arrival and unloading process. An effective arrival management process should include scheduling of trucks to arrive at different times throughout the day and periodic monitoring of the time spent waiting to unload each week. Well, good driving is extremely important. Driver needs to uh, step on the accelerator slowly, not throw the sheep off balance, uh, uh, hard braking is really bad, that can throw the sheep off balance, taking corn corners easily. Good driving is really, really important. Safe transportation begins with an appropriately configured and maintained trailer. In addition to providing non-slip solid surfaces to ensure firmer footing for the transported animals. Prior to each transport, check to verify that all gates and doors function correctly and like the rest of the trailer, are free from sharp or protruding objects which might cause injury. Ensure ramps function well 
and will extend all the way to the floor upon arrival. Good driving is essential. Smooth acceleration and avoiding sudden braking will help prevent sheep falling down in the trailer. Prior to loading sheep, check with the transport destination to identify and comply with any trailer bedding materials requirements and that side slats or plugs are aligned according to their standards. In addition to ensuring sheep have firm footing on ramps and in the bed of trucks, processing facilities should provide floors in the alleyways and chute areas which will help reduce the potential for bruising due to falls or collisions with walls and corners as the animals are moved from area to area in the facility. While implementing procedures that ensure the quiet and calm movement, loading and unloading of sheep will help reduce the potential for and incidence of slips and falls. There are some additional steps those responsible for the care of sheep can take to provide firmer footing for animals in their care. It is essential that lambs are in proper condition when arriving at the processing plant. For example, lambs must be able to carry themselves off the unloading truck with minimal labor and pain. The lambs must not show signs of sickness or diseases such as pneumonia, parasites, and so forth. Fitness for transport and harvest is essential. An animal must be fit enough to endure the normal stress of transport. Animals that are compromised are more likely to become fatigued, injured, immobile, or die during the transport. Non-ambulatory compromised animals include severe lameness where an animal is not able to bear weight on three legs. Other factors that may affect fitness during transport include weather, trailer condition, other animals, driver skill, genetics, footing, and length of journey. Attention should be given to monitor for and respond appropriately when unfit animals are identified at loading or upon arrival at the facility. Animals that may have appeared fit for transport at time of loading may develop problems during transit that require attention at the receiving facility. Non-ambulatory animals, animals with injuries, or those experiencing heat stress need to be handled appropriately by trained personnel. Facilities should have tools, such as sleds, available to humanely unload affected animals and move them into the suspect pen for evaluation by USDA. Facilities should also have in place policies and processes to ensure against willful acts of abuse by all handlers. Willful acts of abuse are defined in the American Meat Institute recommended animal handling guidelines and audit guide as dragging a conscious non-ambulatory animal, intentionally applying prods to sensitive parts of the animal such as the eyes, ears, nose, anus, and testicles, deliberate slamming of gates on livestock, malicious driving of ambulatory livestock on top of one another either manually or with direct contact with motorized equipment, hitting or beating an animal, animals frozen to floors or sides of trailers, lifting or throwing sheep by the wool. For guidance in establishing monitoring plans and policies and procedures to protect against willful abuse, consult the AMI Recommended Animal Handling Guidelines and Audit Guide. Plants must have a written animal welfare policy for transporters that describes what to do in case of an emergency such as traffic accident, road closure, or breakdown.
restraint devices are designed to hold a fully sensible animal in a comfortable, upright position. These devices are also designed to move in a slow, steady motion and to apply slight pressure so to not excite the sheep. Non-slip flooring and cleated ramps at the entrance to the restrainer are essential to minimize slips and falls. Visual blockades should be used to eliminate escape routes from the animal's field of vision when it is fully held in the restraining device, especially when using a restraint conveyor. A long, solid hold-down rack may be used as a visual and physical effect on the restraint conveyor to prevent rear-ups and injury to the sheep and workers. And of course, restraint devices, as with all other handling equipment, must be maintained in good repair with no sharp or jagged edges. Lambs and ewes are never held in the restrainer for more than a few seconds. Visual signs are observed by workers to make sure the minimal discomfort is caused by the restrainer. Good stunning practices are also required to achieve compliance with federal humane slaughter regulations as well as to ensure animal welfare and meat quality. It is important to reduce noise in the stunning area so that animals feel less stress and are as calm as possible. This is done by putting mufflers in air valves and rubber stops on gates. There are two recommended stunning methods for sheep. The first is penetrating captive bolt stunning which produces instantaneous unconsciousness by penetrating the brain with a high concussive impact. The second is electrical stunning, which produces instantaneous painless unconsciousness when sufficient amperage passes through the brain to induce a grand mal epileptic seizure. There are two types of electrical stunning. There is head-only stunning, which is reversible and head-to-back cardiac arrest stunning. The head-to-back cardiac arrest stunning is the preferred method as it produces a still carcass that is safer and easier to bleed. The stunner must be placed correctly in order to ensure the electricity passes through the brain. Auditing of stunning practices should focus on proper placement of stunning wand sufficient time of application, and correct amperage readings during stun. Achieving insensibility after stunning is imperative. A good rule of thumb is simply put, the head must be dead. There are several ways to determine this. For instance, the head must appear dead. The neck hangs and is floppy and limp, the tongue will hang straight and limp, while the back will lay as straight as anatomically possible. There is no natural blinking of the eye, no voluntary coordination of the limbs, though kicking leg reflexes may occur in properly stunned sheep. Additionally, there will not be any response to a pinch or pinprick of the nose. The American Meat Institute guidelines are an excellent reference for the correct ways to evaluate insensibility. At the point of insensibility, the animal is then allowed to be exsanguinated and further processed through the plant. I would now like to review some of the main points in the video on handling and stunning of sheep at the meatpacking plant. Calm, quiet handling, using following behavior, correct use of driving aids, removing distractions, it's also essential that stunning is done properly. If you're doing electric stunning of sheep, correct placement. If you're using captive bolt, it is essential to maintain that tool. 